Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Riddhi Datta. I'm a software engineer at Amazon. And in today's video, we are going to see the decorated design pattern. So if you haven't checked out my uh, builder design pattern video, right? I would highly recommend you to watch this video first and then go and check out that builder design pattern as well, right? I'm planning to put forward a couple of more LED videos, like um, talk about the design patterns that are commonly asked in interviews and used in day-to-day -day software engineering uh, roles, right? So uh, that is why don't forget to you know subscribe to my channel, press the bell icon so that every time I upload a new video, you are notified, right? And that will really, really motivate me, you know, to create such content for you guys now having said that let's start with the video so now let's take a real life example right so let's say you work into a burger shop right let's say it's kfc i would say kfc because i like kfc more if you're a mcdonald's fan don't get annoyed this is just for this use case right yeah so jokes apart so now let's say you walk into a kfc counter right and like this i am very sure this is also going to happen on mcdonald's as well so you walk up to the counter right and you order let's say one veg zinger burger right so basically what the cashier will do over here is he will take your order, right? And you can see it on the screen, right? There's a small screen in the, in the front of the billing counter and you can see uh, uh, one veg Zinger burger and you can see the corresponding price. Now, here comes the most important thing. He will ask you, do you want some extra cheese? Sir, cheese dal dun. Right? So if you say yes, uh, it will be an add-on to the veg Zinger burger price. Now, next question. Uh, so let's say an add-on will an add-on of cheese would cost you 30 rupees and a veg Zinger burger is 180. So now it will be 210, right? You can either opt for it, you don't opt for it, right? Now you ask me another question. Do you want some extra meal? With mayonnaise, yeah, without. And if you say yes, again, let's say 20 rupees, right? So what is happening over here is, and like often, often we get irritated by this question and you often say no. Aap yaar, with de do, without de do, mereko jaldi ek burger de do. But, but there are some people, right, who takes these stuff, who so take these toppings, right? So here, what this is happening is, it's decorating your burgers, right? So now we are going to put this real life situation in your software engineering problem. And let's see, you are being assigned to ta assign the task to design the situation where you have to find out the cost of the burger, like the ultimate cost of the burger, right? Because some person might come in and they can take the Zinger burger with nothing added, right? Some might take just the cheese. Some might take only the mayo. Some might take a combination of cheese and mayo. Some might take a combination of other different things that might exist. So how would you design this, right? And again, there can be various combination of burgers as well. So uh, like, let's say one is Zinger burger, one can be a tandoori burger, let's say for example, right? So that problem can be solved using like, uh, like basic classic example of inheritance, right? So some for that, what you can simply do is you have a burger abstract class. You have the properties of a burger, right? Uh, inside this abstract class, I will make this abstract, right? And then you can do something like this, Zinger burger extends burger because burger, like you can't really instantiate burger, right? That's why it's an abstract class. You need to define the type of burger. You just can't go into the into KFC and say, give me a burger. They will ask you that what is the type of burger that you need, right? So burger doesn't have any real life existence as such. You have to define the type of burger. So that is why Zinger burger is something that has a real life existence. So you will say Zinger burger extends burger. Now there can be another burger, let's say Tandoori burger, right? And that extends uh, again the burger, right? So in this way you can solve this. But what if inside the Zinger burger, you can add different toppings, right? And when you add different toppings, your cost increases. And that is what we are going to solve using the decorator design pattern. So now let's jump into the uh, design of this. So again, as I said, there will be a burger class with some properties, right? And Zinger burger will extend the burger as well as Tandoori burger will also extend the burger and different types of burger, they will extend the burger, right? So I've drawn the class diagram over here. So now, apart from Zinger burger and Tandoori burger extending the burger, right? I will create one more class. And please try to note down that the problem that I'm trying to solve is the problem of decorating the burger, right? Decorating the Zinger or the Tandoori burger, whatever you order, decorating it with different items, right? And then finding out the absolute cost, right? Ultimate cost. So now let's say Zinger burger has a cost method, right? And let's say it simply returns 180, right? So if you just take the plain Zinger burger with no extra toppings added, then it will return 180, right? But let's say now you add the decorators. And for that, again, I create an abstract class, right? This decorator, let's say I call it a burger decorator. We are going to see the code. We are going to see the code in a while. Right, but for now, let's you know see the class diagram a little bit. Right, so it's an abstract class again, and we'll see why we need this extra layer, right? And how does it you know really helps in runtime polymorphism and helps us in getting the cost when we go to the code, right? Now, what will happen is we'll create a burger decorator that is an abstract class, right? And what we'll do is we will have 
like different classes for different toppings like let's say with cheese topping is one class and it will extend this burger decorator and with cheese won't, won't be an abstract class right again let's say uh, this is also an abstract class again let's say with mayo right with mayonnaise it will also extend the decorator burger decorator class right and since the burger has a cost method right uh, since burger decorator is abstract right so it doesn't have to implement the cost method but with cheese has to return the uh, like cost method and with mayo with also has to like uh, implement the cost method right and uh, along with that what is with cheese and with mayo will do is it will keep an instance of the burger object right we are going to exactly see how it is done been done in code but this is for now you can consider that this is going to be a class diagram so basically we have a burger which is an abstract class which is extended by different types of burger like zinger, zinger burger and tandoori burger now we will have another abstract class that extends uh, that uh, burger decorator that extends the burger class right and then uh, the toppings that extra toppings that you want to add right that you want to decorate your main burger with those those classes we cheese with uh, mayo will be different classes right and they would be extending our burger decorator class right and they won't be abstract now, now let's, let's just jump into the code because i'm very sure you might be confused how this is all working out and why is working out so for that let's jump into the code now okay now let's go to the code so that you understand it in a better way so we have created an abstract class burger and it contains description and cost the two properties and i've created two abstract methods that is get description and get cost which i expect this uh zinger burger and different types of burger that extends this burger class to implement right so now let's go to Zynga Burger. Zynga Burger, as you can see, extends, extends Burger. And uh, like I have created two classes that is get description and get cost, which basically is an overriding of the methods that it was created in Burger, right? And in the get description, I return Zynga Burger, Not, nothing fancy, right? And in the get cost, I'm returning 180. That is it called this. Uh, that's just to say that this plain Zynga Burger contains uh, costs 180. Please remember, we have not yet decorated it with anything. This is plain Zinger Burger, right? So if you go into the shop, you just say, hey, I don't need anything. I don't need any toppings. Just give me the Zinger Burger. This will cost you 180, right? Now, let's go to this Burger Decorator class, which I just talked about. And it will extend this burger. And it will be an abstract class. Please uh, pay attention. And also, one more thing. We are not giving any methods or any properties over here, right? So this is just a gimmick, you can say, uh, where we are adding an extra layer uh, and we will see how exactly it will really, really help in runtime polymorphism uh, when, you know, we are trying to get the cost and we are trying to decorate it uh, with uh, different topics, right? So just bear with me, you will understand once I show you the driver code where we, are, where we are actually going to run the code, right? So this is just a gimmick. This is just going, we have just added an extra layer. That is, we have just added a burger decorator abstract class that simply extends burger, right? Now, let's say that we want to, uh, there is one topping that with extra cheese, right? So if we get an extra cheese class, this will extend the burger decorator, right? And since it extends the burger decorator and burger decorator extends the, uh, uh, like the burger class, right? And in the burger class, I have to abstract methods, which I have not implemented in burger decorator. So extra cheese has to implement and override those methods. So that is why in the get description, I'm simply saying that, okay, now in the extra cheese burger, there's also one thing I'm keeping. I'm keeping an instance of this burger object, right? I'm keeping an instance of this burger object. So whenever I'm creating and instantiating the extra cheese burger, I have to pass in this burger object. Now, what is this burger object? This burger object can be either a zinger burger or a, tandu or a tandoori burger or any, any type of burger, right? So you just pass this burger to this topping wala class, that is the extra cheese burger. Why you need this? Because see, this topping has no value without any burger, right? So just think like this. I mean, if you walk into the store and will they give you like, just cheese no right i mean you have to take a burger and on top of that it will give you the cheese so that is why that is why inside the this topping class that is the extra cheese burger we are keeping a burger instance of the main original burger object on which the actual topping is applied right and what it will do is when you say give me the description so it will say whatever description is uh, the, uh, of the burger class like every singer or whatever tandoori right plus add this with extra cheese right and for the cost whatever cost it is of the burger original burger class right so just add 10 to it 10 means that this is the cost of adding the extra so this 10 is the cost of adding this stopping right and this burger is the uh, original burger on which this stopping is added and so basically we are adding this up right similarly we are doing the same thing for extra mayo burger we are keeping an instance of the burger object right and what it is doing is it is taking the description again same thing burger or get description plus with extra mayo and also the, with the get cost whatever uh, the cost of the original burger on which this topping is applied 
plus the cost that is 30, right? 30 is the cost of applying this topic. Now let's look into the driver code. This will clear it for once and all, right? So what are we doing is, we are now having the burger class. So we are instantiating one Zynga burger object, right? Now, uh, the cashier asks, hey, do you want any uh, extra cheese? So you say, yeah, yes, give me an extra cheese. So what I will do is, the uh, burger, I will, I will take this object only and I will do new extra cheese burger and I will pass this burger object, right? So try to understand this. This is an instance of extra cheese burger, right? But it is being kept in the burger class. So this is how I'm achieving runtime polymorphism, right? So, and the code also looks very clean, right? So what you're doing is you're, you instantiated a Zynga burger class you are, and we are going to run this code and see how it works, right? And then what is happening is we, the, we say that we need extra cheese. So for that, what we're doing is we create an object of the extra cheese that is a topping and we pass on this current burger object, right? And then we have the updated burger, right? So if we print the cost over here, so if we print the cost and the description, we will see Zynga burger with extra cheese and we'll get the updated cost to 200, uh, 200, uh, 190, right? Because we are, uh, cheese is, I think, 10 rupees. Next, we also say that, hey, we want extra mu as well. So again, we pass this burger instance, right? And we get the updated burger, right? Uh, so basically, whatever the cost of current burger is, that is 190 plus the uh, the mayo cost, that is 220, right? And again, we will get uh, burger with extra cheese, with extra mayo, and the cost is 230. Now, let's run this code so we uh, understand. Uh, so if you run this code, you get, first, you get the Zynga burger, right? That costs 180 rupees. Then we added extra cheese. Now it costs 190. And now with extra cheese, extra mayo, it costs 220 rupees. Now, let's say I say that, hey, I don't want the extra cheese. I just want the extra mayo. So I just will, I will just comment it out. I will just save it and we'll run it. So you see that I get Zynga burger 180 rupees and Zynga burger with extra mayo that is 200 rupees. I don't have the cheese over here, right? So this is pretty much it. So you can see that how beautifully you can achieve runtime polymorphism here using the decorator pattern. Just adding just one small, you know, burger decorator class, which basically is a gimmick, I say. So basically you can see how beautifully we're achieving runtime polymorphism over here, right? So this uh, decorator pattern finds its uses in a lot of places, right? For example, hotel management system, when you're checking out of a room and you want to calculate the charges, right? So there will be one base room charge, that is the cost per night uh, for the room where you were staying. And then you can decorate that uh, charge, right? With some extra items. Let's say you have taken some items from the freezer. So for that, you know, some extra items will be added, right? Then let's say you have taken some extra services like laundry, then then laundry cost will be added, right? And you can design the same thing uh, over here, uh, like using this decorator pattern that I just showed you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts, feel free to comment down below and I would be more than happy to explain it. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and you can reach out to me just in case if you want to know anything. And also don't forget to join my Telegram group where I post hiring updates if I come across any. And don't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. It will highly motivate me to make such videos and content for you guys. I wish you enjoyed this content. I would come up with more LLD videos and content of such type. And till then, stay safe and goodbye.